I'm Jack Kaiser from Chippewa Valley Progressive Voices, and this is the second part of uh, a multi-part interview of Dan Robinson, the director of Sojourner House uh, of Catholic uh, uh, Charities of the Diocese of La Crosse. Welcome back, Dan. Thank you, Jack. In our last segment, we talked about uh, a typical night, and we were right up to bedtime. Uh, what happens at, uh, after everybody's checked in at uh, 9 p.m.? Well, we're still in the process of winding down. So bedtime or lights out isn't until 10.30 after the news. It could go quarter to 11 after the football game, uh, which, you know, uh, who wants to go to bed at 10.30 when there's a Packers are winning or losing? Doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, we want to stay up. So right around that time is when we close the activity room and everybody needs to go to the bed. They're their dorms. Men in the men's dorm, women in the women's dorm. Uh, already there are several people in there sleeping. That right as soon as they get done eating, they'll go in the dorm and make up their bed, uh, maybe read a book, maybe watch. Uh, they will do Facebook. They would interact, texting, talking, uh, just relaxing in the dorm already. So most people are already in there. At 10.30 then, when everybody goes to bed, it's time for the staff, and if there's any volunteers left, uh, clean up and get set for the morning. Okay. What time do people get up in the morning? A lot of times, right around five o'clock. Five, five o'clock, the activity room reopens and coffee is made. Shortly after the 5.30, uh, if we have volunteers coming in to cook a breakfast, they show up, and there's usually something to start to eat with at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock is our first smoke break. 7 o'clock is our second smoke break. 7 o'clock, every, 7.30, everybody has to be out of the dorms, and we start a process of cleaning things up and getting ready to make sure everybody is gone by 8 o'clock. By the way, who makes the beds and who strips the beds? Okay, the, the guests make their own beds at night and, again, strip their beds in the morning. They get uh, clean sheets and pillowcases every day that are provided by male health systems. They drop off and pick up our laundry and so that we can ensure that they have clean sheets for sleeping on. Um, we have blankets, so, quilts, so many of them made by different churches in the Eau Claire area that are donated to us. Um, oftentimes, uh, somebody moves, they want to take that quilt that they've been using for the last 30 days with them. And, and we allow that because we get a turnover of quilts every year. And this is a donation from Mayo Clinic Health System? Yes, it is. A wonderful, yeah. wonderful donation by Mayo Health Systems, yes. What do, what do your guests do during the day? There's a couple of different options. Uh, one of the most better option is they have a job. Uh, Labor Ready is a huge employer of guests from the Sojourner House. They assign them uh, places to work around Eau Claire. Um, one in particular, one is in the evening and they don't get off work until 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. When they do that in a situation like that, we allow them to reserve a bed in advance saying that they will come at 12.30, and the only requirement we have there is that they do come so that we're not wasting a bed, and they must come sober. And um, a lot of folks have taken advantage of that. We have dishwashers that work at different restaurants till 11.30, 12 o'clock at night, and so we try to uh, accommodate them as best we can. Uh, do is there, are there programs for the people who uh, don't have jobs or are looking for jobs or are unable to work? Yes, there, um, another popular place is Positive Avenues, which is run by Lutheran Social Services. It's located um, by Community Table in the basement of Community Table. And it's a place to go and um, hang out. Uh, on some days they serve a meal there when when community table doesn't serve a meal during the daytime, they, like Tuesdays and Fridays, they'll serve a meal there. Uh, they have computer access there. Um, and it's sometimes, you know, just enjoying community with one another. 
Another option is the library, to go to the library, to go to the job center and work on your resume and job seeking, to go to friend's house at one o'clock, go to the wellness shack and, and hang out there and they actually have some projects there that you can do in the afternoons. So there's a variety of different places and things to do depending on what, what you want to do. In our conversations with uh, Kelly Christensen from Beacon House, we explored how people come to be homeless. And, and the one thing we learned was people come to be homeless for different reasons. Will you like to shed some light on some of the reasons yeah. these people who have to come to you are homeless? Yes. Well, a very small percentage of folks choose to be homeless. They, they, because of a, a perhaps a, a mental struggle or physical struggle, they choose to be homeless and, and not be around people. Okay. That's a very small percentage. A larger percentage of the folks who are homeless are situationally homeless. They're homeless because of loss of a job, uh, loss of apartment. Uh, they have uh, a broken relationship, um, whatever the case may be, they're just temporarily, situationally homeless. They typically are homeless for, you know, a, a month to three months, four months, and then they're back on their feet again, working uh, through a t perhaps a temp, temp agency. And before long, they have enough money saved up uh, to acquire an apartment again. And then the third type of homeless folks are uh, uh, chronic homeless who are unable to work, are unable to um, interact with people, and, and just um, struggle with physical and mental issues each and every day. I think this is a good time to uh, wrap up this segment, but would you be willing to come back and talk about uh, where Sojourner's House fits in with the uh, big picture of agencies and uh, organizations uh, helping to fight the homeless problem in Chippewa Valley? Yes, sir. Yes, I would, Jack. I would love to. Well, thank you very much, Dan.